to advertising has taken up more and more space in the culture. It has literally colonized the culture. Commercial culture is now inside our intimate relationships. It is inside our homes, inside our heads, inside our identities. I think that if anyone wants to understand our culture and our society, they'd better come to terms with the role and power of commercial images. In 1985, we discovered the existence of a huge hole in the ozone layer. The activities of humans are changing the very makeup of the Earth. 1,700 of the world's leading scientists, including a majority of Nobel laureates in the sciences, recently issued this appeal. Human beings and the natural world are on a collision course. If not checked, many of our current practices may so alter the living world that it will be unable to sustain life in the manner we know. Fundamental changes are urgent if we are to avoid the collision our present course will bring. That's where we are right now. We have to make fundamental changes in the way we organize ourselves, in what we stress in our economy, if we want to avoid the effect 60, 70, 80 years down the road. We have to take action now. In that sense, this generation has a unique responsibility in human history. It is literally up to this generation to save the world. Because if we don't, we will be in barbarism and savagery towards each other in 70 years' time. How do we connect psychically to that next generation, to two generations hence, to make their interests our interests? Well, that's a very difficult undertaking. And it will be made even more difficult when the context for it is the market and the stories of advertising. The marketplace cannot deal with long-range issues, by definition. It's an institution that's good for dealing with the present. Corporations cannot think 70 years down the road about collective interests. The time frame of advertising is very short. It does not encourage us to look a year, 10 years, 70 years down the road. The present-oriented nature of advertising will increase because of the current situation. First, you have an audience that is cynical about advertising, that tries all it can to avoid it. That's why advertising spreads everywhere, so people cannot avoid it. And as it does that, it, advertisers are faced with the problem of clutter and noise. In that situation, advertising will be even more connected to the present. It will speak to us more through our bodies than through our heads. It will try and bypass thinking and go straight for the gut, straight for our emotions. That's how you cut through the clutter to communicate to a cynical and reluctant audience. You smack them, metaphorically, in the mouth. You make the advertising visceral. Sexual imagery will become even more powerful. Sex is one way of cutting through the clutter. We've only scratched the surface so far. Advertisers are looking for even more shocking images to get our attention. There was a recent ad for Candy's Shoes featuring Jenny McCarthy that was impossible to ignore. In this move from the cognitive to the emotional, it's not just pleasant emotions like sexuality that will be targeted. Any emotion, however unpleasant, that cuts through the clutter will be used. If at one level advertising reflects our dream life, it will also draw upon our nightmares as well. Face it guys, you stink. There was a recent ad for merry-go-round clothes that focused on the nightmare and embarrassment that people have of being in public spaces naked. This is not about pleasure, but about panic. But panic cuts through the clutter. Unfortunately, in this move, advertising will not stress the value of a collective long-range future. The prevailing values of the commercial system provide no incentive to, to develop bonds with future generations. We don't care about the future. 
To the extent that it does all these things, then advertising becomes one of the major obstacles to our survival as a species. We have to insist on alternative values that will provide a humane collective solution to the global crisis. We have to ensure for our children and future generations a world truly fit for human habitation.